Lego modulars, they are super expensive, but they allow you to build an awesome Lego city. The total cost of this set is about 7,000, yes, you heard me right, dollars. 7,000 dollars, that's more than some people's cars. But back in the day in 2007, you only had to worry about one modular, Cafe Corner. The idea for a modular building came from feedback and suggestions from adult fans of LEGO. For its time, it featured some super interesting building techniques, including the iconic sign. However, it had no interior, you had to build it yourself. Overall, Cafe Corner is a very memorable and iconic set, though if you wanted to get it today, it's a bit overpriced. I recommend trying to build it using current pieces and buying them on Brinklink instead. The next modular would not come from a LEGO designer, but rather from LEGO Factory, a thing which was a predecessor to LEGO Ideas. Market Street was designed by Dutch LEGO fan Eric Brock. The set features three minifigures, and also these minifigures did not include the always smiling classic faces. How creepy. The overall size of this set is quite interesting, it is something I would like to see LEGO come back to, and it was also more affordable at the time, overall I would like to see a return of this. It also didn't have a proper interior, but for the next modular it was one of LEGO's best, the Green Grocer. From 2008 this set actually featured a proper interior, with a grocery store and also some other floors. It stands out by itself, with its impressive color scheme. Next up came the fire brigade. This has a beautiful tower and a 1932 date referencing the Lego group came to be a toy company. The interior was also more detailed than ever and included a fire truck. Next came my favorite LEGO modular, the LEGO Emporium. This is a mega store modular, complete with details and even this awesome sign. The interior is also cool, with changing room and a toy store. LEGO modular started to feel the same, so for the next modulars LEGO decided to do two in one, the pet shop and this house. They could be split in two, allowing you to put them in whenever you want in your city. The house has this beautiful bay window and a very cool interior, and the pet shop features this sign that says pets and what you'd expect. The detail here is not much, but is effective. Then came the tallest LEGO modular, the Town Hall. Hooray, bureaucracy! Building this features this pilastered portico and brick facades treatment similar to some American town halls. It also featured a date, this being the birth year of LEGO's founder. It also featured an extensive minifigure collection, with a marriage, no, the legal one, and even a moving elevator. Overall, this is an impressive set, but the interior is lacking a bit. Palace Cinema would come in 2013, wow, I'm feeling old. And this took a totally different approach, taking inspiration from the Chinese theater in Los Angeles. This also had many stickers, unfortunately, making it super annoying to assemble, and now most of these stickers are falling apart or discolored. The first floor is cool, however, the second floor is taller, featuring a proper theater. The set also featured these cool movie posters, and it also came with a car. Another set that many LEGO fans talk about is the Parisian restaurant. Chez Albert it is a restaurant with a very detailed interior. While the interiors are impressive, the amount of clever piece usage is what makes this a fan favorite. The croissant and the shell pieces truly make this building one of a kind. Next came my least favorite, Detective Office. This was one of the first modulars to include an overhaul story, when our detective is trying to solve a mystery. It has secret compartments that allow cookie smuggling throughout the building. Oh no, and don't forget the toilet. Overall, the detail on the signs is cool. However, for me, it is one of the more forgettable ones. I would definitely recommend you to skip this one if you are trying to build a LEGO city, or using my method of building a LEGO city for under $100. The Brick Bank. The Brick Bank followed the footsteps of the LEGO Detective's offices, but it created a better story, I would argue. Here you have this beautiful Brick Bank, but also this suspicious laundry shop. You see, this is a classic bank robbery story, with money laundry. Get it? The facade is beautiful, truly one of LEGO's best. However, it uses white pieces, meaning it now looks more yellow to me than white. 
At this point, LEGO modulars had been going for almost 10 years, and to celebrate such a landmark, LEGO decided to make a special set, this being Assembly Square, released in 2017. And fun fact, I found one in a LEGO store recently. This set has many easter eggs to other sets like a cafe corner side, this color similar to the green grocery, and this woman that owns a LEGO city and the original LEGO modulars. But if you didn't care about that, Assembly Square sure is a member of set. For the amount of detail, you have a dentist's office, a florist, a cafe shop and even a place for a ballerina. Overall, this is one of LEGO's best, especially with this fountain. At this point, LEGO modulars were a big success with fans. However, one point of complaint were the minifigures. They had this generic happy face which I like because they look old school but other fans didn't like and thought they were degrading the value of the sets. So, with the next modular downtown diner, they reintroduced the color too, but also they provided more current faces for the minifigures. It even had a recording studio inside, it is the third modular set to include a vehicle, this being a convertible automobile in pink, maybe a reference to Elvis, I don't know. Next was another disappointment, corner garage, it is a garage or garage, it is the least interesting for me. The second and and third floors look awesome on its own, but the first floor kind of ruins it with this weird looking gas station, though it's a bit realistic. You guys remember the pet shop, right? So what if we did another modular like that? This was the bookstore. It could be split in two and it was a beautiful modular. This modular features Birch books, bookstores and try saying that three times fast, and a townhouse. It also featured this birch tree. The bookstore designer said the model was inspired by the houses of Amsterdam and the doll houses that were built by his mother. And this set also features different ways to access the interiors. Then came the police station. For me, this was the best execution out of the least interesting concept. That is because LEGO City has been filled with mediocre police stations. However, this set accomplished what many other police stations Fail that, because it looks more realistic. It features an awesome interior, yes, it also has a toilet. But the best part of this set has got to be this donut shop with its awesome color scheme. Then came the boutique hotel. This would feature a diagonal design. Unlike the corner garage, this design would be more triangular, meaning it would be very site specific. By that I mean it can fit anywhere in your city and it can somewhat look odd. It is a very niche modular for niche locations. However, if you are looking at the design by itself, it's one of LEGO's more beautiful sets, with its clever uses of color that uh, look like the skin color of minifigures. Oh no. And this beautiful roof. Other than that, this is a very cool set. It also included an art gallery with the old creator logo. The newest modular is the Jazz Club, and yes, it has a toilet. It also has a very small jazz club, and it also comes with a pizzeria for some reason. Now, we have looked at every LEGO module, but there are some debates whether these modules I'm going to talk about next are even considered modules. So we have the mini modulars. Toys R Us decided to do a spin-off of this with these mini modulars. Thus, Anybody remember this? Then we have the four LEGO Ninjago modulars. This first one that looks cool. Then came this other one which was smaller but at least impressive. Then the gardens which in my opinion are the best. And most recently the Ninjago city with a cable car. How beautiful. And then we also have Marvel modulars. LEGO fans assemble with a Daily Bugle and the Santorio, a Doctor Strange set, with both sets having its own Marvel flavor. After looking at all LEGO modulars, I have come to a conclusion. It's not worth buying them all. That might be controversial, but I found out that our lives don't get better because we have all modulars. At the end of the day, we are just adding more plastic to our lives. But if you want to see every LEGO train ever made, click this video on the screen right now.